Welcome to Because. We have a great show planned for you today. I'll start out by interviewing Dan Artman, who is the Foundation Chair for District 211 regarding their fall run. And then we'll check in with Lisa Perone as she's at CRC with our seniors for their Red, White & Blue luncheon. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, my name is Terry. I take time for fun in uh, the Schaumburg Park District. We participate in the uh, tennis club and also come to all the uh, yappy hour and dog events and appreciate all Schaumburg does for us. Thanks a lot. WSPD, your place to take time for fun. We're back here on Because. I'd like to welcome Dan Artman, uh, District 211 Foundation Chair. Dan, welcome to Because. Thanks for making time to come in this morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, why don't we start off by, uh, tell us a little bit about District 211 Foundation, uh, what you guys are all about, your mission, and that type of thing. Sure. The District 211 Foundation is, um, one thing I have to clarify is oftentimes we think we're part of District 211. Sure. Um, we work in coordination in conjunction with District 211. And some adjunct members onto the board are, for instance, the superintendent okay. of the of the of the um, school district is on the board, as is school board members. But what we do is we raise funds to provide educational enrichment and enhancement to teachers, students, and um, District 211 employees that are out for activities or um, things that they need that are outside of the regu regular budgetary process. Okay. So if a teacher comes to us and says, I need bookshelves for my room, we say that's really a school district funding sure. um, thing. On the other hand, if they come to us and say, we have this great field trip that we want to take, and we don't have the money for it, and it serves this educational purpose, sure. then they, prov they come to us through grant requests. Okay. And then we look at their grants, their grant requests, and then we um, usually give grants in the range of about $500 to $1,000 to various teachers and even some student organizations um, within the District 211 school. That's great. And how long has the foundation been in existence for 211? Foundation has been in existence um, since the 1970s. Um, I'm sorry, my mistake. Um, it was there was part of something in the 1970s, and okay. then it became something else and became sort of um, its own entity within the last 20 years. Great. Any examples of, of projects, or, or as you mentioned, the mission there and some of the things how you fund it? Uh, any examples of and some cool projects that have been funded lately through the program through sure. the foundation? Sure. Um, you know, it, it, I guess you can say they're cool to the <laughs> to the to the students and to the teachers that use them. Sure. They're oftentimes not anything that's necessarily eye popping, but right. they're. They're the type of thing that the teachers feel are very Im important and relevant to their educational purpose. So one of the things that was interesting to me, um, and, and it's a neat thing that I get to do as a foundation board member, is I get to go sometimes when they have presentations sure. involving these and see what they're about. Oh, that's nice. And as an attorney, um, I kind of like things with social sciences and the law. And uh, Conant High School, um, two years ago now, had, um, they hired lawyers to come in, I mean, sorry, actors and actresses to come in and put on a play to the whole student body that was over um, two class periods okay. that had to do with, um, uh, it was basically a courtroom event where uh, they talked about issues involving discrimination. Mm. Um, they had sort of had to, it, it led to a better understanding of how the court system works. Right. And it was open to the entire student oh, body, really cool. not just the students who um, were in certain classes. So um, as I was walking out, they found out that I was a lawyer. So then people started asking me questions about how realistic was this. Sure. So I was able to sort of answer that and then talk to some of the students and teachers as we walked out. And what I found was, um, at the very least, it gave some people who sort of have a idea of what courtroom experience is like, say, from watching TV and movies, right. a, little, a little bit of a dose of realism. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just one example. Okay. Um, another example, which some watching this might think is rather mundane, however, it's really important to the school and the teacher, is um, the uh, home economics department at Schaumburg um, brought in a, a, a woman who um, helped them start their composting program using worms. Hmm. She calls herself the Worm Girl. Um, <laughs> composting um, um, with it to um, a better way to compost using these worms, and um, it's something that the department has now been able to utilize and um, become more efficient, uh, worry about recycling, things like that. 
those are just two small examples of things right. that I've seen. We give money to through um, to some organizations at the schools that help with um, character and development, mm -hmm. and also um, uh, we do innovation grants, technology based oh, things. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Um, we're trying to start a new phase. Um, as a foundation which would be going to large corporations that and sort of going to them and saying we have this big project in mind something that's much more than a five hundred or thousand dollar grant mm -hmm. that we would like to fund and we think it's really really um, important and relevant to the students um, and you are the type of company that this might that this might be of um, interest to you would you mind coming and, and partnering with us? Right. So this is something that we're starting to do. look at going forward as a foundation, not just the, the regular $500,000 grants, but looking into doing larger projects. Right. Great. And, and tell us a little bit. I know one of your upcoming events is the, uh, the Fun Run. Can you tell me a little more specifically about that? Sure. We started, th this will be our second annual. Um, last year was our inaugural. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a fundraiser, but it's also a friend raiser. As Scott Leonard, our chair, <laughs> our That's chair, a good one. I like our that. chair for um, for fun development, likes to say. And what we did is um, we started. We had a race last year, a 5K. It takes place at Palatine High School. Okay. And uh, this year it'll be September 14th. It's a Sunday. Okay. At 8 a.m. at Palatine High School, and the point is to get runners and non-runners and people who have um, kids in District 211 who are interested in getting out there and exercising, and um, to help support the foundation. Um, we have our, our primary sponsor is Dick Ponds, okay. so it's coordinated Great, through yeah. Dick Ponds. They've been wonderful in helping us organize the logistics mm -hmm. of putting together a race like that. That's what they do. Sure. One of the things they do, and they do it very well. Um, and uh, as I said, it'll be at Palatine High School, and um, Everyone is welcome. We, we, we encourage students to come. Right. Um, we have a little trophy that we, or plaque that we inscribe and we give out to the school that has the best attendance. Okay. Well, that's there. nice. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's $25. Oh, very nice. Um, for adults, $15 for students. If they register on race day, then it's $5 more for each of those. Okay. Is there a website that you yes, can get more is. information? If you go to d211foundation.org, okay. there is a link at the bottom for the, fi for the 5K, and it has all the information in there, including how they can register online, register through the mail, or register um, uh, on the race day. Oh, that's great. And uh, I think Realtors Against Homelessness, are they involved with the foundation sure. capacity? One of the other elements that we've become involved in over the last couple of years, in part because of a need that we've seen um, through the school um, district, is the economic, the, the, the issues on local families that the sort of economic downturn and sort of sure. slow recovery has right. had on them. Um, Cindy Ike, who used to be the chair of our foundation, was on the foundation bo um, board for a number of years, um, is a realtor, mm -hmm. and she became involved with an organization called Realtors Against Homelessness. They sort of came together and said, we see this problem in the area that we service, right. and we'd like to find a way for, to help these students. So they actually came to the District 211 Foundation okay. and said, we'd like to partner with you mm -hmm. and sort of use you as a conduit to get these funds we raise out to the needy students oh, that's great. in the area. So we will have our fourth annual um, RA, that's what the shorthand is for it, right. Realtors Against Homelessness fundraiser will be at Chandler's okay. on um, November 6th okay. and uh, from 5 to 10 p.m. And the realtors get together and we have some, um, uh, we have entertainment, we have a dinner, and we also have um, some fundraising in the form of silent auctions and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then that money is then given to the foundation and the foundation then will um, give that to support the various um, uh, programs and activities through the school to help those students who um, need issue need help with getting a warm jacket right need help with getting meals for their family yeah. um, and one of in fact one in because we've sort of taken that that um, turn towards making that a uh, focus right. of our foundation work is um, um, we've um, some of the schools have come to us with foundation grants for a program called blessings in a backpack okay and um, what that does is kids get a backpack full of some food to take home. It's anonymous. Oh, that's great. You know, because there can be a stigma attached sure, to, sure. For, for those students to, to go ahead and um, ask for those things. Right. So some of the schools have come to us with programs for blessing in a backpack, and we started to look at those as, um, 
as areas to fund grants as well. Right. Well, that's great. I mean, an organization that, that uh, felt it worthwhile to, to choose your organization to act as the conduit, I think that says a lot about the District 211 Foundation and what a great community partner you, you are. And, you know, you're very fortunate to get someone else to, to come along and help your organization and, and succeed with a, with a unique event. And, and again, the fun, the fun Run being a, a unique event that as well, I'm sure will be quite successful. Hopefully it will. Last year we had some bad weather. It stormed, but we still had a fairly decent turnout, all things considered. We've gotten a lot of support from the school district. The folks at Palatine High School put in a lot yeah, of time and great. effort to set it up. Um, athletic Director um, Kirby mm -hmm. from um, Schaumburg High right. School brought the cross-country team last year and they served as volunteers. Oh, that's great. So we've really tried to make it a community event. So mm -hmm. these um, students and parents understand that what we're trying to do is to help and support and enrich the educational lives of the students of 211. All right, that's great. Well, Dan, I appreciate you coming in this morning and taking time, uh, stopping by because, and good luck with your event. I'm sure it's going to go great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks. Hi, my name is Lisa Perrone. I'm the Senior Citizens Coordinator for the Schaumburg Park District. And behind me you'll see uh, is our Senior Center, which is in, located in the CRC building. And uh, today we're having a red, white, and blue luncheon to celebrate the 4th of July. Um, our seniors are very patriotic, so it's, uh, it's going to be a very fun day. Um, we do a luncheon, several luncheons, theme luncheons here at the Senior Center. Um, everything from um, St. Patty's Day to uh, Oktoberfest. And they're a lot of fun, great way to meet people. And, um, and they're pretty inexpensive and they're catered and we have uh, entertainment for each luncheon. Um, some of the other things that we do with our seniors here at the Senior Center, we do a lot of trips. They like to get on our bus. We have our own coach bus and they like to get on our bus and go. And um, just yesterday we were at the White Sox game. We also do Cubs games for the summer. And um, we do a variety of things from plays to the opera to downtown tours to tasting tours. And um, we go to Wisconsin um, and uh, we go to the casinos are as well and uh, it's always a good time people are always making new friends and meeting new people and uh, so we'd like to invite everybody that's uh, 55 years or older to come and see us and uh, sign up for one of our trips or one of our luncheons um, if you want to just drop in we have a drop in uh, every morning we do thing everything from pool to um, ping pong to um, cards poker and pinochle and it's it's a really good time and another really great way to make friends so uh, come on out we'd love to see you here at the senior center at the Schaumburg Park District <laughs> We're here at the Red, White, and Blue Luncheon in the Senior Center at the CRC building. And I've got uh, John and Patty Lass, who are regulars of our luncheons. And I thought maybe they'd want to say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. You should join us. It's great fun here at Schamburg. How's the food, John? Is it good? Delicious. How's the music? Always good? Great. Come and enjoy it. Uh, come and join us. I'm here with Bill and Alice Mayshek, and uh, they're pretty regulars. You guys are pretty much regulars around here, aren't you? Yes. So why don't you tell everybody what you guys do around here? Well, we um, go on a lot of trips. Uh, we come to bingo every Wednesday, and I somehow, I became the bingo caller. I'm not quite sure how that happened yet, <laughs> but I do call bingo. You're so good, Bill. And everybody wants me to keep doing it, but I'm trying to do it on a part-time basis. 
Um, and then, the, and then we do uh, we do some volunteer work for uh, other uh, events that happen in the park district. And I got I don't know how many T-shirts I got now. <laughs> a helping hands T-shirt, right? right. Volunteer T-shirts. That's because you guys are such good volunteers. You and Alice both. Hi, Alice. Hello. How are you doing? Fine. Get, tell tell us what's what's been one of your favorite trips that you've gone on with us. Oh my God, I've gone on so many. They've almost all been my favorite. <laughs> Oh, I love hearing that. And uh, you guys are avid casino people, right? Uh, my favorite trip was uh, Branson. <laughs> that one that never happened. All right, Bill. <laughs> We're never going to let that down. <laughs> we do a lot of fun stuff, though, don't we? Oh, we you, do they, they come to our lunch club regularly, um, our luncheons regularly. We do downtown trips with you guys. And uh, we've had a lot of fun, haven't we? Yes. We have. And we've tasted a lot of unusual food, oh, right? Yes. Alice, you like that, don't you? Yes, I love that. I really love going to all these strange restaurants, and some of them were quite different. <laughs> and we liked most of them, right? We liked, I liked them all. Wonderful. Do that trip again. Which one? The one where we went to all these different restaurants. One of the taste trips. Come and take a look under your fall brochure, because it's going to be in there. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the day today. Oh, we will. The food's going to be coming out soon, so. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, we're here at our Red, White, and Blue Luncheon to celebrate um, the 4th of July. And I'm standing here with Sandy Haynes, who's our entertainer today. Hi, Sandy. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Um, can you give us a little preview of what you think you might be singing today? Well, we're going to start off with a little patriotic music, a little God Bless America, America the Beautiful, a couple other patriotic tunes, and I'm going to finish off the patriotic section with a little Stars and Stripes Forever, including the piccolo solo. I was going to say, I know you brought it. I was so excited to see that you brought it. It's wonderful, wonderful. We've got to try to get you on camera doing that. But um, this is actually Sandy's first time here, although I've seen her perform many times. And uh, now I figured it was time to bring you here so our seniors could see you play. Okay, the luncheon's just about over, and everybody's got a full tummy, and they're all extremely happy. Um, Sandy Haynes was here performing today, and of course, wonderful and beautiful as always. Um, we'd love to see you guys at our next luncheon, August 28th. It's going to be a country luncheon with Nick Willette. And uh, for those of you who saw Nick before here with us, you loved him. And we're looking so forward to having him back. And we'd love to have you at the rest of our luncheons. Check out your brochure when it comes out, and uh, join us for another luncheon soon. Thank you. reporting for Schaumburg Park District's Because TV. We're just going to take you around today and give you a sneak peek at all of the outdoor pools the district has to offer. Each one has something to offer every member of the family. We've got Atcher Island, Bach Pool, and Meineke Recreation Center. All right, so first we are at beautiful Atcher Island right now. This is our tropical island themed water park. It features two great body slides as well as a spray pad right behind me and the leisure pool. This is great for families, great for families that have small kids. We have a full service concession stand. It's got burgers, brats, hot dogs, nachos, any snack you can imagine. So let's take a look around and see what we've got. Matt, he's a Streamwood resident, comes to Atcher Island a lot with his family. We're just going to ask him a couple questions about the facility. What's your favorite part of Atcher? Uh, one of our favorite parts is, well, we like the splash pad, and my son and I love going down the water slides. Do you race down the slide? Uh, we try to, but we can only go one at a time, and he makes me go down the blue one with him. He won't let me go down the yellow one on my own. Got to kind of guess the time, so? Yeah. Okay. And how old are your children? Uh, my son is eight. My daughter uh, will be five in two weeks. How often would you say that you come to Atcher? 
Uh, we started coming this year about, we're about here about four times a week. All right, and do you visit the other pools, Meineke or back at all? Uh, we do, but this one's a lot, we feel it's a lot safer for the kids because we can just sit on the edge. The, the, the pool isn't really that deep. It only goes up to four feet. So we can kind of just sit and relax and not have to worry about them being, you know, in danger or anything. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for taking some time and thanks for visiting us today. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks. All right, we're here with some Atcher Island guests that are just going to let us know their favorite thing about this pool. What's your name? My name's Logan. Hi, Logan. What's your favorite thing to do here? My favorite thing to do here is go down the toilet bowl and go in Splash Land. You like the splash pad? What's your favorite thing about the toilet bowl slide? Why do you like it? You, you go fast and you spin around and it's very fun. All right, thanks for letting us know. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob, what's your favorite thing to do here? Uh, the toilet bowl. Everybody loves the toilet bowl. Why do you like the toilet bowl so much? Because it goes fast and it's kind of scary. Kind of scary, all right, thanks so much. All right, what's your name, little guy? Mike. Hi, Mike, what's your favorite thing to do here? Go down the toilet bowl. The toilet bowl slide. Does anybody like the blue slide better than the toilet bowl? Eh, we like the toilet bowl slide better. It goes faster. It goes faster. So. It goes faster. It's for bigger kids, huh? Yeah. All right, can we all give a thumbs up to the camera right there? Because we like Atcher Island. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm here with one of the Atcher Island employees. What's your name? Adam Miller. And how long have you worked at Atcher, Adam? My third year at Atcher. What's your favorite thing about working here? Uh, it's definitely the people and the management. Um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, and they do a great job of balancing... Um, having fun in the guard office with making sure we do what we get to do done out on the deck. Um, we're trained very, very well, and um, it's just a very, very friendly. Everyone's friends around here. Um, it's a very nice atmosphere to be in. Okay, and what is your favorite thing to do here if you were just here swimming for the day? Probably the toilet bowl slide. Um, even though it hurts your back a little bit, it's definitely a good time. Kind of fast, but it's a good time. Toilet bowl slide, good for kids of any age. <laughs> All right, we're on our second stop of the pool tour. We're at Back Pool now. It's a great family facility. We have a climbing wall in the deep end. That's for kids 8, 9, 10 years old. It's a great attraction, the only pool here that has that. There's also a high dive and a low dive, as well as a wading pool for the littler kids. Lots of families come here to enjoy their summer days. There's adult swim 15 minutes of every hour, so mom and dad can take some time in the pool while the kids take a break. So let's see what we've got over here at Back Pool. Got Rich with me. Rich, how long have you been coming to back? Oh, probably about 35 years or so. What's your favorite thing to do here? Oh, I swim because I have arthritis and it helps me with my arthritis. Lots of families come here. It's a good oh, yeah. family place. Yeah, I bring my, my wife and our grandkids and stuff all come here whenever they can. So we enjoy this pool very much. Do your grandkids go up the climbing wall? Uh, they have, yes. In fact, my granddaughters came in from Wisconsin. Uh, two weeks ago and they, they love this climbing wall because there's nothing up their way that, like the climbing wall. Yeah, it's cool. It's very unique to back pool. We've got the climbing wall. It's in the deep end. It's great for kids. Anything else you'd like to add? Oh, well, the smaller grandkids love your little baby pool here. That's uh, the only baby pool pretty much around here. The other pools don't, you know, they have the sprinkler things, but they don't really have a baby pool. So it's nice to have the baby pool here. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us, Rich. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your summer day. All right. Thanks, Heather. patron with us right now. What's your name? Matt. Matt, how old are you? Ten. What's your favorite thing to do at back? Uh, going off the high dive. Do you do all sorts of crazy flips and dives or you just jump? Uh, jump, flail. Uh, yeah, just jump. Doesn't scare you at all to be that high up? No, I'm not afraid of heights. Not afraid of heights. Lots to do at back pool. Thanks so much, Matt. Have a good day. We've got another backpool patron here. What's your name? My name's Jeff Miller. And Jeff, you bring your family here a lot? Oh, regularly, almost every day. And how many kids do you have? I have four kids under the age of seven. 
Oh, so this is a great place for them. Do some of them use the climbing wall? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My boys, my seven and six year old boy, can both make it to the top and they love it. That's way better than I could do on that climbing wall. <laughs> and I saw your son was going off the diving board? Yeah, he's uh, six years old. And because of the wonderful swim lessons we take here every year, they taught him how to be such a good swimmer. He has no fear and is going off the high dive already. All right, that's great. How long have your kids taken lessons? Uh, they took lessons here at uh, the start of last summer before, uh, before the summer started in the beginning, and they took them this year as well. All right, that's fantastic. Why do you think this is the best pool to bring your family to? Uh, you know what? Not only because uh, of the activities they have here with the rock climbing wall and the two diving boards, but also the staff is probably the friendliest and greatest staff I've ever had in any of the pools in Schaumburg. Uh, everybody here knows my kids and my family by name. The uh, lifeguards, I trust them dearly with my kids' lives in the water. They do a great job. They're on top of everything. If there's older kids playing a little too rough or anything, they're right on top of it. They, uh, they do a great job of just keeping an eye and keeping everybody safe in the pool. Plus, everything is very clean. It's probably got some of the cleanest showers and facilities and locker rooms and bathrooms that I've ever seen in any park district. All right, well, thank you so much for answering our questions. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thank you. All right, I'm here with LJ. He's a back center employee. How long have you worked here? I've been working here three years. How long have you been a lifeguard? Three years. What's your favorite thing about back pool? The duck slide. The duck slide? You ride that one a lot? No, but it's, it's a great attraction for people to come see at Bach Pool. And why is this the best pool to work at? Uh, the staff, Bach Nash. <laughs> All right, thanks for spending some time with us. Enjoy the rest of your shift. All righty, last stop on the Schaumburg Outdoor Pool Tour. We're at Meineke Recreation Center. This is the biggest of all of the pools. It's got an Olympic-sized lap pool with a slide in the shallow end. Also, we have the Olympic diving platforms, a high dive, a low dive, and some drop slides in the deep end. Meineke is also home to the Barracuda swim team, so they hold some meets here and practice here daily. So let's take a look at what they've got. I'm here with Alan. He's the Meineke, one of the Meineke pool managers. How long have you worked here, Alan? Uh, this, is, this will be my fifth year. And have you been managing all those years? Uh, this will be my first year being a manager. So you were a lifeguard here before that? Yes. What's your favorite thing about Meineke? Probably the diving well and the 10 meter. You go off the 10 meter? Yes, I do. <laughs> Few will go off the 10 meter. What do you think the best part about working here is? Uh, being able to see the whole community come here and since we have such a large pool, we can see a lot of people coming in. So it's really nice to see everyone out. Well, thanks for doing a great job and enjoy the rest of your day. Friends, what's your name? Nick. Nick, how old are you? 11. What is your favorite thing to do at Meineke? Uh, just going off the diving boards, pretty much. Do you do flips off the diving board or just jump? I just jump. You go off the high dive? Uh, no. no. Too high for you? Yeah. How long have you been coming to Meineke? Well, I started at the beginning of the summer, and I mostly come uh, every other day. You come every other day? That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do here besides the diving board? Probably the slide over there. The slide over here? Yeah. Is it fast? Yeah, I go fast. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Have fun the rest of the day. Thank you. Park District, thanks for taking our tour with us. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you this summer. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget, take time for fun.